This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, you thought you were done. No. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. The great lumdus of Rabbi Shua Lamikutna. This is really, I want to share with you two amazing questions. One has an answer and one has no answer. It's an imponderable. Whoever gets the answer gets a special treat. I don't know what that is yet. Okay, question number one. Rabbi Shul Mikudna asks that in the Sefer HaChinuch he writes, the mitzvah of building the Beis HaMikdash will only be when the majority of the Jewish people live in the land of Israel. By the way, you know that that will very soon take place. Very soon. In our time, in the very near future, the majority of the Jewish people will live in Israel. You know what that means? Something, one thing, very simple. We could build the Beis HaMikdash. That's the opinion of the Sefer HaKadach. The question no asks of Shul Mikudna, in the times of the second Beis HaMikdash, there were only 40,000 Jews in Eretz Yisrael. They were by far, and that was not the majority of the Jewish people. How were they able to build the second Beis HaMikdash if at the time the majority of the Jewish people did not live in Eretz Yisrael. Good question, Rav Nassan. Rav Nassan gives the thumbs up. I want to thank Rav Nassan for being the Mamuna over the videography. And we want to thank Mayor Gladstein for taking this video. This is the question of Rabbi Shul Mikutna. How could they build the second Mesa Mikdash? The majority of the Jewish people did not live in the land of Israel. He says it could be, we know the Gemara in Chagiga says, that after 120, the Tzaddik will take his share and the share of the Rasha. So from here we see that everybody has a vote, and if you don't exercise it, somebody else gets it. In the times of the Second Mesa Mikdash, they all had the ability to come back. They didn't exercise it. So those who did come back, have the ability to assume the role of those who chose not to. And in that sense, we could say the majority of the Jewish people were in fact in Eretz Yisrael. Says Rabbi Shul Lamikutna, I'll give you a raya to this. You all know that the Rambam, and based on this Rambam, Rabbi Yaakov Beirav wanted to reinstitute the original smicha system. Right? We know that today, the smicha that they give in yeshivas is not real smicha, dating back to Moshe Rabbeinu, that smicha ceased. The Rambam says that if you have the majority of the Chachme Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael, that if the majority of the sages of Klal Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael agree, consent, to reinstate smicha, you could do that. What about the Chacham that live in Chutz Aretz? Says the Rambam, We don't pay attention to those sages who live in Chutzaretz. So we see from here that because those sages could have come up and they chose not to, they are irrelevant. If you have the ability to go to Eretz Yisrael and you don't, you are hereby irrelevant. And the only reason Rabbi Shulam Ikunna says that the Rambam reads it, leaves it as a suffix is it because. Maybe Bizman Hazeh, the sages of Chutzarat are not able to go up. So therefore they don't lose their vote and it's not assumed by those sages in Eretz Yisrael. But certainly in times of the Second Mason like this, where everyone had the ability to go up, those who didn't, <coughs> their role is assumed by those who did. And it can be considered that the majority of the Jewish people are in Eretz Yisrael. Now I'm going to share with you a question that nobody's going to have an answer to. No one is even going to have a suggestion. This way nobody could get the treat because nobody will have a good answer to this imponderable. I, I'm happy that my friend Isaac Antabi came all the way from Panama because Isaac likes the imponderables. So here's a um, Eastern Europe imponderable of Rabbi Shulam Ikutna. What's the halacha? If, let's say, a person cannot afford to buy Ner Hanukkah, what do they have to do? They have to sell their clothing and sell their shoes to buy Ner Hanukkah. 
Does one have to sell their clothing and sell their shoes to buy Ner Shabbos? No, we don't find such a halacha. What if somebody has a few bucks and they could either buy Ner Shabbos or Ner Chanukah? Which takes precedence? Ner Shabbos or Ner Chanukah? Ner Shabbos Adif. Why? Shalom Bayis. So as for Bishulam Mikudna, I don't get it. So the guy has no money. So he sells his shoes. He gets a few bucks. Well, now that he has a few bucks, he has to buy Ner Shabbos. Yeah, but you don't have to sell your shoes to buy Ner Shabbos. So he didn't have to sell them. Yeah, but he has to sell them to buy Ner Chanukah. Yeah, but once he sells them and he only has enough for one, then he should use it for Ner Shabbos. This is an imponderable of Rabbi Shulam Ikutna in a sefer called Ma'at Tsari. Ma'at Tsari are little imponderables of Rabbi Shulam Ikutna. It's always good to have some learning to think about before you go to sleep. It helps you sleep better if you aren't already. Agudin. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.